it was uh, such a journey. I think the making of the project was such a journey and it tells the story of this incredible journey. It's been described as the gayest Marvel project ever. Full frontal, you do see her butt and she says, eat my ass. Is it nice? It will be a gay explosion by the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my only hope for Agatha all along is that the show is as funny as the interviews. Law and Order meets Basic Instinct meets Bound. Hocus Pocus meets The Wizard of Oz yeah, yeah, yeah. with a sprinkle of comedy, a dash of horror <laughs> all wrapped in that MCU tortilla, and a bit of a musical. I like it. I mean, for a show that is apparently the most important MCU TV show to date, and the first social media reactions from hand-selected people being incredible. It's perfect. Funny. Sexy. Fans go wild for the best Marvel TV show ever produced. It was perfect, fun, and even better than WandaVision in glowing first reactions. The people that were hand-selected to talk about it were all over the moon on social media. Not in the reviews though, obviously, because the embargo doesn't actually release until the show does. Disney clearly incredibly confident in their own show there. Although I don't know if you noticed, there is a remarkable amount of audience reviews. 50 plus with many of them being glowing five-star reviews, which is strange for a show which which hasn't released yet. It's even stranger when they say they've seen the first two episodes as if they're talking about the actual release of the show, as they can't have had early screeners, because if they had, well, they'd be under the review embargo like everybody else. Of course, getting people to praise it on Twitter did lead to the new series sounding absolutely unmissable, and I entirely agree. <laughs> well, now, when you see the merch, which has been available for pre-release of Agatha, I have to say, this show wasn't made for me. Not because I wouldn't buy the merch for a video, I absolutely would. No, it's because it's it's not on Amazon, only on the Disney store. In fact, I think the only way Marvel could top this series is if they put Daniel Craig in it. <laughs> Although this is going to be the first Disney series to say eat my ass on Disney Plus, which considering this series is going to be an explosion. It will be a gay explosion. I don't really want to know what's exploding at the time. Although I can understand why that would attract more actors to Hollywood, as I've never wanted to be an actor until I found out I could get paid to tell somebody to goggle my balls. No, the unmissable part of Agatha comes from the interviews, because these had everything, including quite possibly one of the greatest interviewers of all time. Cause this the gayest Marvel project to date. I love this guy, he's a machine gun. He doesn't stop. He will ask the same question to every single person without shame. Cause this the gayest, gayer and gayer as each episode goes. Gayest Marvel project. Gayest Marvel project. Gayest project Marvel has ever done. And who can blame him when the entire cast keeps agreeing with him? Yes, darling, but I can't tell you how. I mean, I think it's pretty, well, what is the most exciting about it is- Agree? I would agree with that, yeah. I think it is. And I will take that, and I will love that, and I will tuck that under my pillow at night. I, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It better be, because that's, that's what I signed up for. Go forth and, and be great. Almost saying go forth and multiply may have been a bit of an oversight, though. But the best interview, bar none, came from Patti Lapone, someone who just does not give a single crap about this show at all. How much did you know about the Marvel world before you signed up? Still no. Still, you still don't. Everyone knows the answers you're supposed to be giving in this scenario. Nah, they're clearly beneath her. She wasn't the only actress that couldn't be bothered to give an answer either. What can you say? Nothing. I'm sorry. What has Kevin Feige said? And I'll just call, I'll just nod. I'll be like, right. Yeah. What do you want me to say about the show? Nothing. Can't be bothered. Can't even be bothered to come and try and fake an answer. Just ask somebody who isn't here rather than me. I don't even know why I'm on this carpet talking to you, to be honest. Do you want to ask the page boy for something? He'll probably come up with a better answer than me. I was only in the show. I've been paid now. Uh, can I piss off? I find something remarkably endearing about this. I just don't care. Can I leave now? <laughs> And Patti LuPone embodied this entire attitude. Did you watch WandaVision before you filmed it? Yes. Did you understand it? So much so that the interviewer himself is like, what? How? how? Are you not even going to lie to me about it? Have you seen Avengers movies? Exactly it. Yeah. No. <laughs> Did you watch the Avengers movies? <laughs> this guy cannot believe what he's hearing. Do you want to see Avengers movies? He's like, okay, I don't want this interview to damage your career. I'm going to keep throwing her lifelines like she's in the ocean about to drown, but doesn't realize the tide's gone out yet. Surely you like something about Marvel, right? I think so. Why not? <laughs> it's like, why not? You've got to, come on. I'm throwing you the lifelines. I'm desperately trying to pick you up out of the ocean to save your lives. Why are you just sitting there as the rope is hitting you in the face? Why not? You're part I of- I should say I want to because I want to be in the Marvel universe. It's like clearly knows. I, I should probably say I should, should I? I, should, I probably should. I'm not going to though. <laughs>
do you want to fight? Who's the superhero you want to go? I don't know anything about them, so... I can't even lie to you. I know so little about it. And my favorite moment comes from this. When he turns around to the guy behind him. I don't know anything about them, so... And I think the look is, can you help them out in some way? And it seems like the guy behind the interviewer is writing down or pointing at something, desperately trying to tell her, Deadpool. The answer you need to tell is Deadpool. Because let's be honest, the interviewer isn't much help here. Well, I don't know why we just say someone. Uh, say Superman. Who'd you want to fight? Superman? I oh no, no, don't say Superman. Oh God, that's going to make it worse. He's not Marvel. Yeah, He's I don't want to say Superman. <laughs> Why on earth? I'm trying to help you. Even I'm crap at it. I don't even know. Just ignore me. That guy will help you. By the end of this interview, I came out loving both of them. But <laughs> I'm just like, this is a disaster. Let's roll with it. Deadpool, are they Marvel? They just became part of Marvel. Deadpool, you know, I said Deadpool. I like Deadpool. I, I know who Deadpool is, don't I? I must know who Deadpool is because I just said his name and, and said I should fight him, right? I, I would be, I would fight Ryan Reynolds. I have no idea what Deadpool is. I have no, I, I don't actually know, no. I don't even know what Deadpool is. Not who Deadpool is, what Deadpool is. I don't know what Deadpool is. Looking at whoever's behind him in the camera. I have no idea what Deadpool is. Definitely with the one that's Deadpool. Maybe there's a tablet with just like a, a poster on it. I don't even know what that is, but that. Uh. No idea what Deadpool is, but I would just fight Ryan Reynolds. I just want to bang Ryan Reynolds, really. Don't know. And she says, eat my ass. Is it nice? I just want to fight Ryan Reynolds. That's the only reason I'm interested. But at least now the interviewer has an answer. He can play off this. You've given Deadpool. Let me help you. What will the movie name be? Bridge vs. Deadpool. Fighting <laughs> Deadpool. I'm sorry. You're Deadpool? I'm literally throwing you every bone that I've got out of the entire pet store, love. There is no more life jackets. There is no more safety lines. And the interview ends with the interviewer just giving up. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. We're, yeah. <laughs> it's officially my favorite interview of all time. That wasn't so much a car crash interview as an infinite amount of cars hitting an infinite amount of marvels in the face. And the other reviews aren't better. We've got a director from three episodes. Directing episodes six, eight, and nine. Well, they fully admit, yeah, we, we don't know how to write television. There's a finale. There's another finale. You really hit a point where you're like, do you even know what finale means? Yeah, we couldn't write a show that just came together at the end. So we just had to do two finales. <laughs> An opportunity to depict the female character in all its complexities, all its dimensionalities. Wow, you depicted it in all its dimensionalities. That must have taken a long time. That you haven't even noticed and, and being able to say something about the human experience. What does anybody think that Agatha all along has to say about the human experience? They don't even know the audience demographic of Marvel, let alone what it's like to be human. This is always going to be an issue. Representation is important, so you should obviously represent the majority of your audience. Whereas if you represent a tiny fraction of the audience, we, only a tiny fraction are going to watch it. They, they seem to know that. The second season, who would you love it to be in it? <sighs> well, there definitely will not be, but... Yes, there definitely won't be in the series of Agatha. And in before... Oh, it's it's a limited time series. It's limited because they know nobody's going to watch it. If it was going to make them a fortune in money because everyone was pouring in and the viewing figures, don't worry, they'd make a second series. This just means they know they won't need to. And believe me, I say that as Agatha All Along's biggest fan. Pony Madonna? <laughs> How fabulous was that? But as we are going to bow before the altar of Hollywood and learn about the human experience, what kind of aspects of that can we expect from Agatha? It's about nastiness. It's about, um... What kind of nasty? Oh, the good kind. The fabulous kind. The well-styled kind. That's our show. Yes, it's going to be good, well-styled, nasty. What? You're covered in excrement, but I've put sequins in it. God, I'm looking forward to this show. <laughs> Witches are queer inherently just because we are outcast and like set aside for many reasons. You know one thing nobody thinks about when they're sort of outcast from a group? Maybe it was deserved. Maybe, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe the evil witches which are making people suffer through their nastiness were the problem. Maybe outcasting witches is a good thing. Why are you trying to identify with the evil witches? This show shows a really good representation of different types of people. Yes. The evil people? Agatha Harkness is an entirely evil witch. Ah, oh, but she's just like me for real, for reals. And that we can all use the power we have in it within to like... Exactly what power do you have within? Seriously. Well, I can tell someone to eat my... <laughs> <laughs>
No, Agatha all along will be adding themes of female empowerment. Empowerment! All because a witch is able to live outside of the mainstream idea of what we think of as a woman. I have absolutely no idea what you mean. My favourite part of this is that you think it's an idea. <laughs> You're acting as if they're not like physical things that exist in reality. No, they're just an abstract concept somewhere in the ether. I mean, we had fabulous costumes. We were very mindful of the emotional and thematic truth about what we were doing. Talking about pissing witches not changing the universe. But no, apparently they live out of the mainstream because they're able to be scary and funny. They're able to have those emotions that we're not supposed to reveal. She can have big feelings. Dude, this is 2024. I wish you'd all shut up about your feelings. I'm fed up of you showing everybody how you feel. This is why everything's so crap. You won't shut up about it. I just want you to actually piss and do something rather than feel something. But no, a witch in this capacity contains all the feelings, all the intentions, all the mess of being a human being. Really self-reporting there, aren't we? I'm just a mess. <laughs> No, you guessed it about the morality of Agatha. As always, when you get these kind of creators, this is nasty, big, bad, gross impulses. It's a villain or a hero blurring the lines. Agatha really teeters on the edge. She's really selfish, but she has these unexpected feelings. Yes, she may be evil, but occasionally she might feel sorry for a child, and that makes her morally grey. It's almost like when Scarlet Witch made an entire town suffer for months, and then he was just like, ah, well, you know, we forget about that. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. But apparently, Agatha will show a very different side to WandaVision's Big Bad. I didn't expect it to be so deep. Yes, that explains the first comment. Explosion by the end. Yeah, it's so deep you can set off an explosion inside it and no one will know. But apparently, Marvel has been behind the times when it comes to including people. Despite everything being like that, you've got Willow, you've got Acolyte, all the good series. This time, we're definitely making it that way. To the point where the Mary Sue is just hoping that you're not teasing them, that you're actually making it like this. The MCU has been so far behind and the Mary Sue, they've been so disappointed with it. I mean, look, it's not an exactly high bar to clear. All we want is the entire series to be about me and nothing else but me. That'll have wide ranging appeal to the universe. Definitely make its money back, I promise. Are we just talking about vibes here? This is the target demographic of the show, I can tell. Or is it truly going to be well-rounded? Well, that's the question on everyone's lips. Which lips and are they exploding? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Are they unexpectedly deep? Oh look, it's actually gone up to 100 ratings now on Rotten Tomatoes while well, I've been filming and got an even more five-star reviews, which is amazing for a show that still hasn't released and is under review embargo. I'm sure it's all above board. But from everything I've heard, this is going to be Willow crossed with the Acolyte, which to me just means it's going to be absolutely glorious. But some people are scared that it might even face the same challenges as the Acolyte. I mean, it's faced backlash from fans. Animosity was exacerbated by comments from the cast and the crew who opened provoked critics. This has culminated in an unprecedented hate and review bombing campaign. And I can agree with that last bit. I mean, look, people are review bombing it five stars before it's even released. They can't keep getting away with this. And I mean, while the backlash didn't actually cause the show's downfall, the Acolyte had deeper issues. One division definitely going to be like the Acolyte then. But this show, just like my favourite show, Willow, will be about normalising. It's going to be woman-led and it feels appropriate. Han, that plays Agatha, says there's always going to be people that are stuck, you know, stuck in the past. We just need to forget them. We're moving into a future which is better. Wait, why are you stealing my car? My wish for them is that the more they see these shows, the shows which are as rad, almost as bad as the word vibes, it's just an older word. Not really moving into the future there unless you think you're being down with the kids. Yeah, this is going to be rad. They're going to be a rad and exciting as fierce as the shows that they think are the only kind they can be. How dare you like the shows that you like? There are far more other kinds that you should be liking instead. Those rad ones. Exactly what you needed. The lost king who could ride you to victory. Oh! Ooh. Throbbing. We'll start to loosen that kind of thinking. If only we could force them to see enough shows, they'll definitely understand that I am right and I am the one they should have been watching all this time. All those pesky other people. No, Agatha all along will be bewitching and has had its rave first reviews. And some of those thoughts come from none other than men's health themselves. Uh, there's always got the interests of men first in their minds. Yes, while, while they are big fans of the explosion and do actually agree that previously that all the messaging has been about how actually we're all the 
same and when we're not the same at all and because we're not the same representation actually does matter therefore you should probably represent the majority of your audience if you want to make a profit but now you see it's encouraging that a franchise that is so associated with typically masculine power fantasies mcu heroes are frequently kings super soldiers or ceos well that'd be amazing if we actually got back to representing the audience of marvel ah uh, yes we could actually have some uh, good characters that the audience would like i see where you're going with this men's health obviously advocating for your own audience why don't you just give them something that they'd like you know something that represents them appeals to them and they can relate to with their morality wouldn't that be good no it's encouraging that a franchise which would normally represent masculine power fantasies is putting its money and creative heft behind such a femme coded series because it's important that as there's multiple people on the screen uh the burden of representation is lightened it's great because it, it's it's going to be normalized not representing your male dominated audience I'm just saying it seems like a mistake to me. This show is right up my street. It's going to be the equivalent of burning Guy Fawkes on a bonfire. It's just going to be funny to watch the sparks fly. But for everyone else, it's like, isn't it great we're representing all of these people which are not actually the audience of Marvel? You can see why it's a limited run series, can't you really? It was so important that we lightened the burden so we could represent as many people as possible, except the audience of Marvel. We don't want to represent them so they won't turn up because representation is important. If you do want somebody to watch the show, if you do want someone to like the show, they should be able to relate to the main characters, which means you have to represent them. You have to provide a character that they can relate to, that they understand, that they agree with. That even if they wouldn't make those decisions in that circumstance, they can understand how that person got there. Not what we've got now, though. Now we've just got creators and showrunners making shows for themselves, with a cast who are making a show for themselves. And they don't seem to care about the demographic of the audience. They don't seem to care how wide the audience is, how many people could watch it. And it's only when it's made and they go, oh, actually, no, this is crap, isn't it? Yeah. Why were we even allowed to do this? Do you know how small our tastes are? How niche? Even when we make what we think we'd like, even we don't like it. That's where you end up with these limited run series. It's a train heading into a wall and they're like, maybe we shouldn't put another one down the tracks, eh? Yeah. Just the one. Just the one series. But in a show, so up itself as this, so pretentious, so full of musicals and comedy. I at least am looking forward to it because I think this is going to be comedy gold for all the wrong reasons. And that at least makes this show made for me. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,